Welcome to EPG Patshala. My name is Purendra Prasad. I work in the Department of Sociology, University of Hyderabad. Today we are going to talk about drugs and patents. This is module 17 in Sociology of Health. In terms of drugs and uh, patents, it is uh, closely linked to the existing healthcare system. If we have to improve the health status, the health systems actually should be in place and the drugs or medicines actually should be supplied, should be made available to these uh, um, decentralized kind of healthcare system which in turn actually can dispense the medicines uh, to the people. If you look at the history of uh, the Drugs and uh, Patents Act in, in India, now starting from 1851 onwards, there have been the patent kind of uh, acts that were passed in India. Initially, the British wanted to protect their own kind of uh, uh, um, uh, medicines that are imported into India. Uh, it started from that, but to a large extent in the post-independent India, uh, you find the, the kind of uh, uh, patents actually were talked about, uh, uh, you know, immediately after independence because there was actually a product patent regime where the transnational pharmaceutical companies actually had the monopoly over the production of these drugs and the Indian manufacturing sector was not allowed to actually uh, um, to participate because they do not have that kind of a huge capital to actually invest and produce the drugs. Therefore, from 1945 to almost 1970, for a very long period of time, India depended on the import of drugs. And with the import of drugs, the prices, the quality, the availability, everything was dependent on the, the externalities. So, Indian drug companies actually had very minimal kind of a role uh, in the early stages. It was largely the public sector pharmaceutical companies actually uh, were doing research on medicines. So, it depended on state funding, how much state was able to invest and that contributed and that is the reason why you find in 1945 to 1970 kind of a period, the IDPL, uh, Indian Drugs and Pharmaceutical Limited actually which is uh, the government kind of public sector uh, company, which was one of the most important kind of a pharmaceutical company in India. In fact, Anjareddy who is now heading the Reddy Labs, which is one of the world's pharmaceutical company actually worked in IDPL uh, as an employee. So, the entire research, investment, everything was in the government sector. The way this whole thing changed was government tried to actually invite the foreign companies to actually manufacture drugs in India. While they, the multinational companies actually started uh, locating in India, but they were still trying to restrict the Indian drug companies to embark in terms of producing it. And uh, so, th these kind of dynamics actually did not give a, a growth spurt for the Indian drug companies to independently actually produce because of the product patent regime that was actually in, uh, in existence till 1970s. 
As I said, 1970s, the 1970 Patent Act, which was actually put in Parliament and it became actually a, a, a legislated kind of act in 1972, that changed uh, uh, the entire uh, uh, pharmaceutical sector and the character of the pharma sector. From 1972 onwards, because there is no process patent, and the Indian companies were able to in, get involved in the production of generic kind of drugs. So, what do we mean by the, the generic drugs? Generic drugs which are actually produced by these companies in terms of certain uh, uh, preparation of the molecule which is actually useful for each of the uh, 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 diseases or each of the treatment mechanism. Branded drugs actually are the ones which try to say that the combination of these kind of uh, uh, molecules uh, or the combination of the drug itself would actually you know would require certain quality and therefore they started increasing the prices based on the brand. It is like any of our other uh, uh, kind of market, whether you talk about the consumer market the, or the clothes market, sim something similar pharmaceutical branded drugs actually uh, were trying to be uh, very, very expensive and unaffordable. So, we are saying that 1972 to 1990, uh, I think was a very uh, uh, growth phase for the Indian uh, pharmaceutical sector. It produced a uh, lot of these uh, um, drugs which at a very, very reasonable price. Government of India also passed what is called as Drug Price Control Order, DPCO in 1970s. What it does is that it actually restricts the prices. There is a ceiling, there is an upper limit beyond which they cannot actually sell. So, there is actually a kind of a control mechanism that was introduced to through DPCO um, and then the FERA Foreign Exchange Regulation Act also was introduced uh, herein again trying to regulate the medicines that are actually supplied by the transnational corporations in terms of the price mechanism. So, DPCO, FRCA and with the Patent Act of 1970, the medicines actually that were produced from 70s were actually uh, um, you know of a limited kind of value. Um, uh, the price actually was regulated by the Indian state and uh, the, the foreign companies actually had restrictions in terms of what they can actually uh, um, you know decide how they can decide prices etc. And therefore, I think uh, uh, you know uh, Krishna Iyer, the former Supreme Court Justice uh, says that Jai Shuklal Hathi Committee uh, actually earmarks a kind of pharmaceutical justice in this country. It actually creates a new regime of low prices for the poor people in this country. So, this, this is where one could see the, the price control mechanism that, uh, uh, that was strictly implemented and uh, therefore, I think the medicines actually were uh, available for a large majority of the people. But after the intellectual property regime came in, in the 2005, uh, what happened is pre-70s kind of a product patent regime actually was brought in again. And this actually restricted again the Indian drug companies to manufacture. So, all that we are trying to talk about is, if you look at the history of the pharmaceutical industry in India, pre-70s, 70s to uh, uh, 90s, late 90s, 
and then early 2000 onwards i think the way patent regime has come in which has huge implications for the cost if you look at the logic behind introducing patent when when you talk about these two types of drugs one is innovator drugs second one is generic drugs innovator drugs were because of the creativity the originality the kind of uh, uh, investment that each individual actually uh, or organization actually invest a particular thing but when it moves into a commercial kind of a domain it should not be misused misappropriated for commercial purposes and therefore there is a kind of a protection mechanism that was introduced through these innovator kind of drugs and uh, if you look at the generic drugs which is something that can be you know uh, made available for uh, um, you know a large set of population so in that sense there, there is a, a a logic behind introducing you know the the patents for certain innovative kind of uh, drugs but what happened is the 2005 kind of uh, uh, regime intellectual property regime that comes in has completely been used by the corporate companies for their own vested interest through the the trade regimes that have come in so this is where one needs to look at the the kind of uh, uh, change in policies but what is important uh, also we need to understand is the regulatory mechanism that is in place in india there are actually the if you look at the regulatory mechanism you know there is something called uh, drug uh, uh, control uh, uh, organization uh, which which actually uh, you know which is under the ministry of health and ministry of uh, family and welfare ministry of chemicals uh, also these actually ministries regulate the pharmaceutical industry but they essentially function under what is called as dcgi um, drug controller general of india so the drugs actually are you know um, regulated by you know dcgi in india but the pathetic kind of condition is that dcgi actually is a has a very minimal kind of a staff their resources are very uh, limited their manpower actually is very very uh, restricted so for a huge country like ours in the post 2005 kind of a patent regime uh, where lot of multinational companies actually are involved in the production of drugs uh, through and also conducting clinical trial uh, research in india you find that lot of these are short circuited and you know permissions are granted without much uh, um, you know scrutiny so because um drug controller general of india actually is a very very weak kind of a, a body uh, today a lot of pharma companies from outside actually are you know trying to make use of this situation and you know push their own kind of uh, uh, drugs into india so one could see that indian state while actually formulating such the certain uh, regulatory bodies it's not serious in its commitment it's not serious in its implementation of the uh, 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 regulations that it actually proposes and uh, this is uh, again you know uh, because the pharmaceutical companies and their kind of industry lobby is very very powerful who have actually lobbied with the uh, the ruling classes and in that sense they are able to actually manipulate the state and its regulatory mechanisms to an extent that we have actually uh, you know literally very very weak regulatory system 
as a result <coughs> you have a lot of irrational spurious and substandard drugs which are made available to the population so indian pharmaceutical industry actually has gone through a different uh, uh, regimes and um, as a result i think there are a uh, lot of problems that uh, you know people have encountered in the recent um, two decades uh, you have uh, you know misappropriation of the existing legislative mechanisms there is conflict of interest between the medical professions and the kind of clinical trial research that's going on in this country the kind of production of drugs which are again you know uh, detrimental to the health of the people the interests of the consumers or the patients actually is compromised and by promoting the exchange value the interests of the pharmaceutical industry is actually you know uh, uh, is protected so the the conflict between the actual uh, uh, users or the consumers uh, of these drugs is not taken into account seriously so when you see the the kind of conflict of interest that actually emerges in the indian context a lot of these medical doctors actually are recruited into clinical trial organizations and none of these doctors actually are trained into a research uh, uh, domain and um, most of these doctors are actually busy in terms of their own day to day clinical practice with you know large number of patient pool uh, the multinational companies actually rope in these practicing doctors who hardly have any time for their own kind of uh, uh, um, practice into the clinical research as well as a result you know a uh, um, lot of the clinical trial research is going on in terms of very mechanical uh, manner this again brings in okay in terms of uh, quality kind of uh, research and the way the drug companies are manipulating the data uh, in terms of uh, forging the uh, the statistical aggregates and uh, in terms of creating certain documents which are more favorable to their own kind of uh, clinical kind of uh, uh, findings all these are, are actually part of the larger politics of pharmaceutical industry so we are saying that there are number of problems that actually are uh, uh, you know um, are emerging today because of lack of regulation by the indian state pharmaceutical companies actually also employ unethical practices to actually you know give incentives give gift organize the tours of these medical professionals to different countries by way of which they try and actually make them part of the research agenda which is not actually uh, meeting the needs of the the developing countries or the indian population for example most of the clinical trial research that's actually uh, been done here has nothing to do with the the disease burden or the tropical diseases that we have it's all about lifestyle diseases it's all about cancer and other set of diseases which is a major set of uh, 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 issue uh, uh, in the western countries and this kind of agenda setting within the uh, developing countries by the pharma companies is another uh, uh, kind of a factor in all what we find is that the availability of the drugs i think is a important kind of issue with the with the new liberal kind of uh, uh, regime today you find markets determining what kind of priorities that uh, need to be set in in the developing countries 
And therefore, what is important here is that health policies play a very important role in uh, uh, in improving the living conditions of the people. Uh, health policies, particularly pharmaceutical kind of policies, okay, uh, play a much more role because they have immediate kind of implications. The the way these uh, uh, actually impinge on the health uh, and actually uh, are hazardous or dangerous to the people's health. So when there is an immediate kind of implication in terms of health, how can state actually uh, um, play into the hands of the market? So these are some of the questions that you know this module actually brings in in terms of examining a role of state, role of the the market and pharmaceutical companies, how national companies and the international companies actually are you know playing uh, 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 different sets of roles in during different periods of time and you know how the international kind of uh, uh, pharmaceutical companies in the recent two decades actually have played or are in the process of actually playing havoc with the health of the people in developing countries. These are all concerns that I think uh, we are we, we need to actually understand. Let me sum up now this module. You know, this module talks about the history of pharmaceutical industry and in terms of how patent regimes in different uh, periods of time influenced the, the availability of drugs, etc. And why state actually is playing a very, very docile role in terms of regulating the industry which is hampering the interest of the uh, the local communities and why state actually is not playing active role in terms of making these the clinical trial research and the drug discovery kind of things in terms of more accountable because while third world population is being used as guinea pigs there is no accountability either by the market forces or the state in terms of actually providing the, the available affordable kind of drugs in this country. So in that sense we are trying to look at the industry, how it is regulated, what are its implications on the, uh, the human population and how the future generations actually are going to get seriously impacted in terms of these policies by the state. Thank you.